Hi, um, I'm Tracy Pratchett. I'm a Knowledge and Library Services Manager at Lancashire Teaching Hospitals, NHS Trust. Hi, and I'm Helen Pullen. I'm an Outreach Librarian at uh, University Hospitals Bristol uh, NHS Foundation Trust. Today we've come together to talk about knowledge mobilisation. I'm very new to this uh, subject area, um, so I'm going to be asking uh, Tracy, I'm going to be asking you some questions and I'm hopefully going to learn a lot um, about what you've done and, uh, and, the, and the activities that you've put into practice and what's worked well and maybe what hasn't and uh, what things we can we can learn from this. So if you're happy, Tracy, I'll kick off with some yeah, questions. No OK, so um, can you uh, tell me um, about some of the knowledge mobilisation activities that you've been involved in? Yeah, of course I can. Um, it's let me start by saying it hasn't been a um, strategic approach to knowledge management, I would say. Um, I would say that my approach of getting involved in knowledge management, knowledge mobilisation activities in the organisations I've worked in has been more of a um, opportunist approach, I would say. So responding to needs of the organisation or seeing where we could maybe support certain projects or work going forward. Um, so most, I suppose, if I start recently and then work my way backwards, that's probably the easiest way. Um, to look at it. Um, so, so this year, I, I was involved in a in a um, project within the organisation to look at how we could learn from COVID, um, and that was capturing information from individuals. I talked about this at the one of the knowledge mobilisation events. So, there's a recording about it. So, I won't go into too much details. You can have a look at the recording on the the YouTube channel if you're interested. Um, so, but that was interesting. That was working with quite a few uh, senior people in the organisation. Um, and also looking at how we can kind of share share the knowledge that we gained. Um, we, we captured knowledge through interviews in that situation um, and we've written a report which has been presented to board um, and now the next steps is looking at how we can um, maybe get that published or maybe share it more widely so that people can learn from that. Um, within the service I suppose some of the things that we've done in terms of knowledge mobilisation is um, I have done a randomised coffee trial for the last three years. Um, uh, I've just done it now for November um, again and had reasonable response actually from the organisation. People are definitely keen to meet up with each other for a coffee. This year has been slightly different because obviously we've been running it as a virtual event um, and despite people being busy they're still quite keen to get involved. So I think I've had probably about 30 odd people sign up this year. Um, I think because of the nature of how we're working, I'd quite like to do it more often. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, have you done anything like that, Helen? Um, I no, we, well, we wanted to, um, but, uh, and we were definitely going to do it this year, but obviously mm -hmm. COVID um, hit and uh, it's all sort of gone on, on hold um, at the moment. I would like to ask you one question just uh, yeah. briefly before you carry on. Mm. And that's, do you think that your kind of like existing um, sort of relationships with with people across the trust has sort of helped you with with implementing some of these um, uh, knowledge um, mobilization management um, activities like have they got you a, a foot in the door yeah I think um, so I think in terms of learning from covid stuff I think the fact that I was already known in the organisation and I'd kind of had relationships with the people who were involved in that project. And because I had knowledge management, knowledge manager in my title, yeah. job title, I think that that helps me to get involved there. Um, my line manager who's um, in organisational development is uh, really supportive and really proactive um, and understands knowledge mobilisation and knowledge management herself um, and the the power that it has so I think that's been really really useful um I think it, it's also a challenge because I'm, I'm, I'm embedded within the organizational development team so I, I kind of sit under them and they do a lot of um, knowledge mobilization stuff already themselves mm. um so so yeah so that so, so sometimes it's hard to know what we should do so with um, the randomized coffee trials I did wait some time 
before I actually took that on because I knew that they were already doing uh, coffee catch-ups um, things like that. Ah. But, um, that it was like well I didn't really want to step on their toes but when no. I did speak to them they were they were like oh yeah no it'd be great if you could do that because we thought we might do that but we just haven't had the capacity to kind of push it forward so I'm quite lucky in my organization the organizational development are already kind of on it and they do a lot of the the kind of traditional km stuff that's really interesting uh, yeah that's really interesting because that's um I don't think that's anything that kind of we've we've we certainly in our trust haven't thought about approaching or or maybe knowing who to approach so it's really helpful to to know that that's um uh, potentially a, a team uh that maybe like you say already do these these types of activities yeah. or that like you say that they might like to do the activities but that they need support and that's obviously where the uh where the sort of library team can can come in because obviously we're we're quite interested in yeah. you know library professionals being involved with the uh, with knowledge management yeah um yeah no that's that's really good i think, um, I think partnering yeah. with with other teams is 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 the way forward if you know it might be a good way of kind of getting into getting into knowledge mobilization so other teams that we've partnered with c continuous improvement or quality improvement teams mm -hmm. <clears throat> they can be good as well um but yeah i think that's a, a good approach sorry helen i'll let you carry on no no thank you this is all um i'm finding this all very useful and mm -hmm. and like probably many people that might listen to this i'm scribbling down furiously <laughs> um you've talked about randomized coffee trials yeah. is there sort of anything um any other activities that you've done that really kind of stand out for you um that have really kind of uh, have, have worked or, or maybe on the opposite have really not worked very well um, yeah be interesting um, to hear one thing that i've done uh, in partnership with victoria treadway actually um we um have run a few uh, fishbowl conversations and I've, i have to say i found that as a really powerful tool to um generate a conversation i was a little bit um wary so i don't know if you have you heard of fishbowl conversations do you know how they work well, I was just about to ask you that. I was going to say I have heard of it, but I don't know. I hold my hands up. I don't know anything about it. Or if I have done, I've clearly forgotten it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd love to hear more. So basically um, what you do is you so in a physical space, you have four chairs. in the um, And um, at any one time, three of those chairs could be occupied by a person. And these those three people have a conversation. You would set a topic, so it could be something that kind of is is very topical or that could stimulate quite a lot of debate. Um, and I think the very first one that we, the first conversation that we facilitated was with librarians at a regional event. Um, and it was um, whether libraries should um, allow patients to use them. So should NHS libraries allow patients to use them? Um, we had quite a smallish group. I think there were probably about 12 to 15 people. You have this small inner circle where the, with the four chairs, three of which are occupied, and those people have a conversation. And then the rest of the people are sat in a circle around that inner circle, and they're just listening and reflecting. Um, and anybody from the outer circle can join the inner circle at any time and join the conversation. When somebody joins the inner circle and takes the fourth chair, somebody has to leave the inner circle. So you always should have a chair free. Um, and the facilitators don't really facilitate the conversation, but record it um, and maybe ask people to, to, to move out of the inner circle. Um, they can join the conversation if they want to kind of take one of the chairs and have, have a comment to make, they, then they would join the inner circle. Um, and what it does as well in the inner circle, you um, protect people's time so you take it in turns at speaking so if I'm speaking everybody else has to to listen to me so you don't cross over and we used um a cuddly toy mm -hmm. so that then when you were holding that toy it was your turn to speak um and I just was blown away by this technique because it actually had I thought I had concerns that people might feel a bit self-conscious about being in the middle so we did kind of prime a couple of people to get the conversation started um but actually the conversation was great and it kind of 
it was really free flowing. People were really respectful, stuck to the rules. So everybody had time and space to speak. Um, people said when they sat in the middle that they didn't feel um, too on show. Mm -hmm. So it, it worked really well. <clears throat> um, the second time we ran it, we ran it at um, Health Libraries Group Conference and we had about 30 to 40 people in the room. Um, we couldn't really set it up in circles. Um, it was quite challenging getting everybody in um, and it just didn't really work with with a larger group. I think we'd have to kind of, I think it's really important that you kind of have time to see the room. Uh, people did feel a lot more self-conscious when it was in a larger group. Um, and people got a little bit frustrated, I think, that they couldn't get into the middle. Um, and also there was um, one issue that, that that we hadn't really considered in the first session, but I think I would always advocate to people now to consider when you're running a fishbowl conversation, is it can be a little bit, it, it, you need to just make sure that it's set up correctly so that it's inclusive for everybody, because it, because of the way the conversation runs, not everybody, you know, if say you, you rely on lip reading, you might not be able to see everybody's faces and be able to follow the conversation. Um, if you were um, maybe in a wheelchair, you might not be able to get to the middle. So there are just certain things to think about in terms of the setup and who's there, I think, in terms of some practical considerations. So it worked really well with the small groups, um, but not so well with some of the larger ones, I think. Oh, that's um that's really yeah that's really interesting um it's yeah it's not something that um kind of we've ever we've ever done um uh, before um i suppose i should say that i don't um like i i suppose i i sort of said it in the beginning i don't have much yeah. in the way sort of um to do with knowledge management at the moment okay. um uh, i i should say that we as a, a trust have have merged with another local trust and and because of that, we have a, a new um, shortly to uh, well, she's shortly to sort of um, come into the role of knowledge management uh, specialist. So it's going to be a really um, interesting uh, time, I think, uh, for mm. us, um, especially when uh, she gets her her feet under the table and um, and is able to sort of um, start sort of implementing um, some some knowledge management sort of activities and uh, and and strategies. So it'd be really interesting to hear uh, the other interviews that I believe are, are taking place like ours um, like sort of today um, and be able to pull on people's um, experiences and, uh, and, um, and implement some of, uh, some of the things that are obviously going on uh, across, uh, across the country. Um, I suppose what I'd, I'd like, I, I'm getting a, a, a good, a very good impression that you, you enjoy um, these knowledge management mm -hmm. activities, but what, what would you say that you uh, enjoy sort of the most? Um, and, uh, and do you have a, a, a proud sort of knowledge management um, moment? I, I'm guessing maybe the, the successful fishbowl, but is there sort of anything else that maybe you can tell me that uh, I can I can learn from I don't know um, <laughs> question oh. I, think, I think um being able to do things virtually mm. I think being so we we have I was I was pleased that the randomized coffee trial has taken off even though it's we're, we're suggesting people have virtual meetings not face-to-face -face meetings and I participated in a um, virtual fishbowl recently as well which which was interesting and it, it did work it was kind of harder obviously you're not moving around so you don't have the physicality um but it, it did work my proudest moment I don't know I think I think the most rewarding the most fulfilling moment has been the when I've run the fishbowl conversations because the conversations have um I think it it, it's slightly different to a to a facilitated conversation pe because people do get protected space to speak if they can get into the inner circle which <laughs> when you've got 40 people and the chairs are not set up very well it doesn't always work but I think um, some of the conversations did did go in directions that we didn't expect them to um, people's that some of the feedback was that people felt that actually they might not always Get opportunity to join a conversation but they felt quite safe 
and protected and that nobody was going to talk over them sure. so so it it did provide quite a safe space it might have been because of the people who were there I don't know but yeah so I think that's probably what I would say would be my not sure proudest but most rewarding <laughs> um, um, did, did you um I, I'm, you might have already said this actually um how did you sort of capture the the sort of information that came out of like the fish bowl uh, fish bowl even did was there any way that you captured anything or, or or was it just sort of sort of chatting and conversations and and then at the end you just sort of you know all went your separate ways what what happened no one of the we had two facilitators so myself and victoria um and i think i took notes so I took, I captured what people were saying on a flip chart and then wrapped, typed it up afterwards and shared it back with the group. Oh. So I think it's quite important that you do capture the learning. That mm. I think it's not, it's not like, oh, it needs to be confidential or anything like that. Um, it's about sharing experience, sharing knowledge um, and capturing that knowledge for, for sharing and reuse. When we did it virtually, I think it was recorded. Uh, and and where did you share the um, once it was captured? Um, where where did you share the the knowledge? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I th well, definitely was shared back with them. I I seem to think that there may be something on the knowledge for healthcare website, but I'm being a little bit tentative there just in case. But part of the part of the learning, so it wasn't just we 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 did kind of um obviously recorded the conversation itself but part of my learning was around the process and how it felt for people so how it learned so we kind of did have that conversation as well after, oh, after that actually... conversations because I think it's really important mm. um and at HLG you know there were quite a few negative things that came out of that some people had quite a negative experience but I thought that was really powerful learning so I was quite happy with that because I wouldn't <laughs> it didn't work if I'd not done it I think that's it. Sometimes when things don't work as well, you learn more from it than than when it just goes, you know, goes yeah. so to plan. And and I guess that kind of leads me into maybe maybe one of the last questions. And um, you you've touched on on some of the points probably already. But what would be your key sort of recommendations? Um, to to give to somebody that's maybe starting out on knowledge mobilization or or some of the key um, recommendations from from your activities you have already I think given um, a lot but if there's anything else you can think of well I suppose the first one would be identify people you can partner with in the organization so see if there are people who you can work alongside or people who might be able to help you identify a need so organisational development team are probably quite good at knowing um, where there are challenges in the organisation where people might actually benefit from having a facilitated knowledge cafe or coffee catch up or, you know, um, after action review, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely partner with organisational development. I think something that I haven't done, but I know that Sarah Lewis in Buckinghamshire has, is maybe look at developing a knowledge management strategy. So we don't, we have a strategic aim within our overall strategy, but we don't have a separate knowledge management strategy. Um, so maybe either develop some kind of plan around what you want to deliver and what you want to achieve. Um, and familiarize yourself with the range of knowledge management tools. There are, look at some of these resources that have been developed mm. on this site. Um, have a look at the, I think there's some e-learning, isn't there? On the electronic I believe learning so, panel. yes. So that's a good starting place, just to kind of familiarise yourself with what what what's available. And start small. Yeah. You know, do do a randomised coffee trial. There are, you know, there are loads of people, so people, lots of people have done this now, so um, we're more than willing to share our resources. So if you were interested in doing it, Helen, I could share yes. everything that we've we've done. It's really easy to set up it's a good thing to do to dip your toe in the water and people have a choice whether they you know whether they get involved or not um but i think you know you might be surprised people <laughs> want to speak to each other yeah, well, yeah. People. 
I think what's really interesting uh, uh, from from my point of view is that you've done these things virtually. Now, yeah. we had a few kind of knowledge management activities planned. Um, one actually being a, a randomised coffee trial, although I wasn't involved with the, the setup, it, it was one of my other colleagues. But the fact that you've done yours virtually, I think um, that's really interesting that it you've you've still managed to it, even during COVID you've still managed to go ahead and and keep some of your knowledge management activities sort of rolling and and we've put it on hold we've definitely put it on hold so I think what I'm taking from from our chat here is that we can still carry on we just got to look at the other ways of of doing these activities um learning from like yourself and others who have who have, have done it successfully or or maybe not as successful as they'd hoped but maybe have learned from it and yeah. and there's there's obviously you know you capturing the learning and being able to to share it would definitely help myself and my colleagues um you know actually still carry on with with some of the things that that we had planned so that's um I, I find I'm um, yeah I find this this our chat really um, really helpful so thank you. Now I don't feel like I said that I've got much to offer, but is there anything? Um, dare I say it? Is there anything that you'd like to ask me? So I suppose what? How do you um, yourself? I suppose because I know that you've got this new role, haven't you? Starting in your service, but. Yes. What kind of knowledge management activities do you think you'd like to get involved in? Well, I think, personally, like, think. Oh, yeah. Well, personally, I think like what you what you've said earlier is start small. Mm -hmm. So I, I I definitely like to probably take some things that maybe that you've done successfully, like the randomised coffee trial, like the fish bowl, a couple of things like that. Maybe just concentrate on one of them and not try to yeah. sort of do too much um, at once. And uh, yeah, just I, I'm guessing after this conversation, pick your brains a little bit more, yeah. probably in a few emails, um, yeah, and uh, and 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 sort of uh, yeah, go back to um, like you said, go back to the knowledge um, knowledge for healthcare blog, pick up on the tools and and the information that's there, and yeah, put together a plan of 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 doing a um, maybe a an RCT, um, even yeah. though we uh, even though we're working um, virtually from home and uh, and giving it a go and yeah, keeping our fingers crossed that the technology works. Um, yes. I mean, but, with, uh, with a randomised coffee trial, it's really easy because you don't actually have to do much. You just send out the email to people and then match them up and then tell them to get in touch with each other. So from and then evaluate it. So from a, a, our perspective, it's actually quite a nice. Um, not very time intensive thing to do and you just evaluate it at the end so really it's just a couple of emails that you need to send out and that's kind of it and a bit of promotion yeah um another thing that i didn't suggest but i think one thing that we that's really good is to try things with like um either within the team mm -hmm. so like after action reviews quite good to kind of get used to doing that within your own team or you could maybe have um, a fishbowl, but with, say, somebody, you know, like your education team or somebody that you do work closely with already. Yeah. To kind of test it as a process in a kind of safe environment. That's a good suggestion. I, yeah. I like that. Test it, test it in a safe space. Yeah, <laughs> that's, just to kind of get a feel for how it works. So, yeah, uh, that's really, really helpful. Oh, well, um, I think I've come to the end of my questions. Um, Great stuff. Well, thank yeah. You. Well, thank you very much. Shall we stop the recording? Yes. Yeah.